in the news for a while, and that's the regional sittings. I saw yesterday my picture being used to promote these regional sittings, even after we came out clearly uh, expressing concerns about this. I don't know if it is blackmail or whatever the case might be. Look, we reiterate the fact that uh, we are opposed to these regional sittings. Does that mean we are opposed to the regions, the different regions, and the country for that matter? Of course not. One of the things we have been saying is, if government, if parliament, is serious about addressing the concerns from the different regions, why don't we allocate a week here in our plenary to each region? And we say, this week, we are now going to be handling matters to do with Western Uganda. Next week, Northern Uganda, then Eastern, Central, like that. In that particular week, you have all the ministers concerned, members of parliament from those areas raising all these different issues, and then we come out with clear action plans. That's less costly. And yet you would be addressing the concerns of these different regions. It is less costly than the billions to be spent in transporting the entire parliament to these different regions. So for those that have been misrepresenting us, saying the LOP and these opposition MPs are against these different regions, far from it. Far from it. In fact, the concerns of many of these places have been raised severally by members of parliament from these different places. And not much has been done. Why are we not insisting that action gets to be taken? Our colleagues from northern Uganda have severally raised the issue of Karuma Bridge, which has been closed out to several vehicles, especially the heavy ones. And so transport fares have doubled. Travel time has doubled. That's an issue we know about. Why don't we push government to deal with it immediately? The upper land question to date is still unresolved. The question of boundaries in northern Uganda, which has caused skirmishes here and there, is still not addressed. Effects of nodding syndrome are still glaring. And our colleagues from northern Uganda have raised those issues here in Kampala, in our plenary, severally. And now you want to lie to them that once parliament moves to their region, those issues are going to be addressed. And yet they've been raising those issues here in our plenary, and ministers present, and not much has happened. We should be pressing government to addressing these concerns. So it is not true when you clearly hoodwink people and say, now, when we come there, those issues are going to be addressed. The issues are known. And our colleagues from these different regions have been raising these concerns. That's what we must be insisting on. Committees of Parliament, as we have been saying, ought to be empowered. And committees have gone to these places, different parts of the country, specifically northern Uganda, and they have brought back reports, which we have discussed, whether it be about nodding syndrome, cattle rustling, APA, land question, the Karuma Bridge that has been closed off to several vehicles, and so on. And even now, as we speak, there are some committees that have gone ahead of parliament. Again, that is less costly. Because if you're sending committees, when they bring reports, let's attend to those reports. Why do you want to insist that now we must take the entire parliament at a huge cost? As if we don't know the issues of concern to the north and to the western, east and central. We know these concerns. If we care about these people, let's address those concerns. Because they are members of parliament whom they sent to represent them have raised those issues severally as matters of national importance and so on and so forth. So to spend a lot more money for parliament to go and sit in these areas, and yet it will still be parliament because people are not going to come and attend parliament and address parliament because that's not what happens. Any few that will come will be in the gallery, whichever the gallery will be. So we, we have seen people who have used this situation to blackmail us and say we are against northern Uganda. Or No, the regional sittings are not just in the north. They're, going, they're meant to be in every region. So it's just that the northern region is meant to be the first place. But we are saying let's address the issues of northern Uganda. Because the northern Uganda has got concerns. The western Uganda, eastern central have got several concerns. Can we address those critical concerns? The other concern that I did have, which I have raised several, is the clandestine way in which these matters have been handled. The speaker calls a meeting of a few commissioners here and there, and then they decide. 
We are going to have regional sittings and we are going to spend these billions of shillings. Why, why do you not invite the rest of us members of the commission so we can have our input? What are you hiding? Because normally when there is huge endeavors such as this, there is a worry about misappropriation of taxpayer money. And when things are done under the table, why do you do them under the table? I've written to the speaker severally about this matter. There's been no response. The only response which I got a few days ago was the speaker writing to me and requesting me to mobilize opposition MBs to go for the regional seating. Why, why do you take us for a right that you want to bring us on board only at the tail end? So our views don't matter from the word go. You sit, decide with whoever you decide to spend billions of shillings and then at the tail end you're writing to me and saying, please mobilize your members. How? What, have you, what are you hiding that eventually might come through regarding accountability issues? So, we need to address the concerns of the people of Uganda. Medical interns have been protesting almost every day. The Minister of Health said they need 18 billion shillings to deploy these medical interns. Why can't we press government to bring a supplementary over that. Parliament has passed several supplementaries over ridiculous things. This is important. And the medical interns, it is not just for their good that they get to finish their course. But no, they are deployed in hospitals in the different regions of the country. And they get to address medical challenges there. And in, by the way, these regional hospitals and health centers, the bulk of the work is done by medical interns. That's another way of you sorting out the concerns, the medical health concerns in the different regions and so on. Let's address the critical issues as opposed to just politicking and saying now people are going to be happy that MPs are in their area. But you see, it will not be of any use or relevance if we spend these billions, transport all MPs, ministers, staff of parliament to Gulu to sit there and then we leave Gulu. But the war claimants who have been claiming for their money for a very long time have not been paid. The Apalan question is not resolved. Karuma continues to be cut off. And for that matter, the entire North is cut off in many respects because of that. The cattle rustling and all of these issues. So let's major on majors and minor on minors. We think that transporting the entire parliament for an entire week and all the billions that are to be spent is a minor. The major should be to address the critical concerns of the people of northern Uganda, which we know which the members of parliament from northern Uganda have been raising on the floor of parliament. That's what we should be dealing with. The other issue that uh, we want to talk about is uh, we did see a communication from the speaker of parliament regarding a motion that's been on for some time after a court case. There are some people who went to court quietly on a matter of public interest litigation. We got to know about this court matter when the ruling was out. Normally public interest litigation does it operate this way, that's done clandestinely and then people only get to hear at the tail end when there's a ruling. We have been looking for the petitioner uh, to no avail because we wanted to encourage him to appeal. But uh, he's not available to us clearly showing who might have gone to court or who might have taken themselves to court. But that on the side, if our colleagues, the commissioners, thought that this court ruling exonerated them, incidentally it does not. I'm hoping they had time to read the entire about 23-page judgment. Because while court might be saying, ah, it is okay for you political leaders that this matter passed through the channels it should have, court is saying the clerk to parliament should be punished. We are saying, why then would you be punishing the clerk to parliament if all was well with these service award issues? Because what did the clerk do? The clerk attended this meeting. The clerk attends commission meetings as secretary to the commission and takes note of decisions taken by the commission and his role is to implement. 
she does not take decisions on behalf of the commission. The commission takes decisions and then tells the clerk, go and implement. So now, you want to punish the one who implemented. How does that make sense? The clerk did not participate in this decision. The clerk did not even benefit from this service award. But you're saying those that came up with the idea, passed it, and got the money, it is okay. But the clerk to parliament, whose role was to implement the decision taken, has got to be punished. It's very problematic. Even a non-lawyer can see that there is a problem. But bottom line is, it does not get the commissioners off the hook. Because if the court that you run to, to absolve you is saying, okay, we are absolving you, but the clerk should be punished, the clerk is being punished for the money that you agreed to give yourselves and that you eventually got. So it does not take away the question of the service award being problematic. I want to encourage the Speaker of Parliament, Right Honorable Anita Anit Among Magogo, not to be afraid of debate. Because what the censure motion was saying is, let's debate this issue. I don't know why the Speaker is trying to run away from debate. I don't know why she, what she's trying to shield. Of course, also given that she chaired this particular meeting. So I want to encourage her, do not be afraid of debate if what you guys did was right. Especially now that they are saying the clerk should be punished. For what exactly? What, what wrong did the clerk do? Away from these people who agreed to give themselves money and they got this money. The commissioners may run, but they cannot hide forever regarding this issue. Because as we have said from the word go, it was problematic. These are people who were in office for a few months. And a few months down the road, you're saying, let's sit and award ourselves money. For what? What exactly had you done in a few months' time? What, really, had you done? And then, of course, for the then LOP, I, I don't know, it's ironical that uh, government says, we, you have opposed us nicely, so we are now awarding you for opposing us nicely. Some of these things don't make sense. So we are not dropping the ball on this issue. What happened was wrong, and court has actually said that. That's why they're saying the clerk should be punished. Um, and again, people can petty